This heat pump has heated our entire home and given us all the hot water we need throughout the month of March 2025, and it has cost zero pounds to run. And in fact, our entire system even turned a small profit. So if you follow this channel, you'll know we've been on a bit of a journey. We've been installing solar and batteries over the last 15 years, and we've been upgrading our system to the point where we can be energy independent. Just in this last 12 months, we've added the heat pump to the mix. And now we're at a point where our system is able to generate enough energy, not just to cover the entire house, but also the running of the heat pump as well. March 2025 is the first month that this has all come together exactly as we planned. So let's dive into the figures. Let me show you what we generated, how much energy we used, how much energy did the heat pump draw, and some changes that we've made to the system over the last month. And then at the end of it, I'll show you how much money we saved. Now let's start off with a quick recap of the system. So we have 9.6 kilowatts of solar panels split across three different aspects of our roof. We have four panels on our garage roof. We have a further 10 on our south by southwest facing rear roof. And we also have a further eight on the front north by northeast facing roof. Coupled with nearly 30 kilowatts of solar edge batteries, plus another seven kilowatts of EcoFlow batteries, means for the vast majority of the year, we are effectively off grid. Now we also have a small experimental system in our garden. This consists of four uh, 200 watt panels that we actually took off the roof a couple of years ago, and we've mounted those on our fences to see if they will generate a meaningful amount of energy. The total system comprises about 800 watts of panels and a small micro inverter. If you're interested in that, then I'll put a link to a video that I produced a couple of weeks ago that gave the latest update, and then come back in March and I'll be able to give you the full year figures of how they performed. Now, let's dive into the figures and let's take a look at how much energy the heat pump used during March. Now, firstly, let me state, this has been a really unusual March. The fact is it's the 2nd of April and I'm stood outside here in a t-shirt, tells you it's been quite warm over the last couple of days. And in fact, when we look at March, March has been outstanding from a solar production point of view. And in fact, we generated more energy this March than we generated in April last year. Now, if you look at a normal generation curve for the year, what you'll see is that for the first couple of months of the year, you effectively double from a very small amount in January, it kind of doubles in February, doubles in March, doubles in April, till you get to about May, June. As you can see from the graph for this year, March has already blown April out of the water. We've absolutely had a stonking month for generating electricity. Hopefully that will continue into April, but we'll have to wait and see. So what did the heat pump use? Well, we pulled in 438 kilowatt hours of electricity for both heating and hot water. That means we had a combined coefficient of performance of 3.43. Now, I know there's this whole thing going around amongst all the gas boiler fans that say, well, unless you have a coefficient of four, then it's more efficient to use gas. That's just not true. And I'll explain why in a moment. So with a coefficient of performance of 3.43, if we look back towards the beginning of the year, so for the first three months of the year, our seasonal coefficient of performance has been about 3.6. So as I said, March has been a bumper month for solar generation. We generated 882 kilowatt hours of energy. We stored most of that straight into our batteries and as soon as the batteries were full, we started exporting power back to the grid. So if you think about it, we generated 882 kilowatt hours of energy from the solar panels and we used 438 of it to power this heat pump. So effectively, this ran on 100% solar energy for the entire month and we still exported a whole bunch of power back to the grid. Now, the way that we've operated our system during March is that we charge our house batteries during the cheap rate period overnight using Octopus Intelligent Go. And that means that during the night, we fill the batteries right up, and then from 5.30 in the morning, they start to supply the house, which means they only drain down a very small amount before the sun comes up, which, now the clocks have changed, is, uh, is around about 6.30 in the morning, and they top the batteries back up, and then any excess energy that we're not using gets exported. So for the energy we imported from Octopus, we spent a total of 93 pounds in March. 
But for the energy we exported back to Octopus, they paid us £111. Now, we also had a very small gas bill. Um, as some of you know, we haven't quite disconnected from gas yet. We still have a gas hob in the kitchen. Um, our gas bill for the entire month was £11, of which about 80% of that is the standing charge. So let me put this into perspective for you. We ran our house for free. We charged two electric vehicles. We ran our heating system. We earned seven pounds in profit, and it's only March. As the old song says, things are only gonna get better as we go into the middle part of the year. Now let's talk about savings, because a year ago, we were in a very different position. We didn't have our heat pump, we had a gas boiler, we didn't have an export tariff, although we did earn a very small amount through what's called the deemed export under the FIT payment scheme, um, we didn't have an export tariff available to us. So what did things look like a year ago from a bills perspective compared to today? So a year ago, we paid Octopus 98 pounds for electricity during March. Now that's almost exactly what we paid them now, a few pounds difference. So our electricity bill, having the heat pump, hasn't gone up hardly at all. But this is where we made the massive saving. Our gas bill one year ago in March was 132 pounds. Our gas bill this month was 11 pounds. So our electricity price hasn't changed and our gas bill has gone down 122 pounds. This year, we paid £93 for electricity versus £98 last year. We paid £11 for gas versus £132 for gas a year ago. So for those that want me to do the maths for them, we saved £6 on electricity and £121 on gas. And we gained £111 of export energy as well. So our total savings from the system for this one month, for this early, early March of 2025, was £238. So if you're doing the calculations, however much you think your solar system is going to cost, these are the kind of savings that can be achieved. And it means that your solar and battery system will probably pay for itself in about six to eight years. Now, we have made a few changes. The system is not running exactly like it was a year ago. In fact, we have a heat pump this year. We had a gas boiler last year. But... As the clocks have now gone forward at the end of March, um, we've made a couple of changes because the weather has got so much better, it is much warmer. We've actually reduced the temperature in the house by about one or two degrees, depending on the time of the day. This means the heat pump isn't working as hard as it was back in February and early March, um, and consequently it would use less energy. We've also stopped force exporting from the battery. Now on these beautiful days, we've been exporting nearly 40 kilowatt hours. So we don't really need that little bit extra that we could have earned by exporting another 10 or 15 kilowatts from the batteries. I'd much rather have the batteries full and not have to import energy at 7p to make a few pence selling it back later to the grid. It's less cycles on the batteries. It's obviously better for the batteries um, over their life if we're not forcibly charging and discharging them every single day of the week. Now, we'll see if this is a good strategy. Um, I'm going to try and compare my export this month to my export next month. The March numbers might skew it. If we don't have quite as good in April, then we might see some difference in there. So I'm going to try and model it, and we'll see which of the two strategies work the best. So let me answer a couple of questions that I'm absolutely sure will come up in the comments, and I might save you a little bit of typing. So one of the questions that comes up all of the time is, so let me get this right, you spent tens of thousands of pounds to save a few hundred. Yes, that's exactly what we did. But let me rephrase that for you. We invested thousands of pounds to get a return on our investment of a few hundred pounds a month, and that has paid for itself in six to seven years and is now generating effectively free money. Sounds a little different when you put it that way, doesn't it? Ultimately, solar is going to be one of the best investments you can possibly make. Yes, it will be expensive up front, but it will pay for itself relatively quickly in the lifespan of the system, and it will continue to return that investment for many, many years to come. Now, the average ROI, as I say, somewhere between six and eight years, it really depends on the system you're installing, how much it costs, and the aspects of your roof, how much energy you can generate. But as I say, my own system has been an ongoing project. Um, it's just turned 15 years old, some parts of it, and it's paid for itself approximately twice over. So not only did it return its initial amount of capital we, we input into the system, it's returned that again, and it continues to return money every single month. So my system is fully paid for, but what about the heat pump? What about the ROI on the heat pump? 
I get a number of comments from people saying it will never pay for itself. So let's just talk about ROI on heating systems because I find it really strange that people who are invested in the gas boiler industry say, well, the heat pump will never pay for itself. What's the ROI on a gas boiler? The answer is there is no ROI on a gas boiler. A gas boiler isn't going to save you huge amounts of money. Unless you put in a gas boiler to replace a system that's maybe 70% efficient with one that's maybe 90% efficient, then you will get that very, very small amount, but it will never pay for the gas boiler. Whereas with a heat pump coupled with solar, this will definitely pay for itself. But personally, I'm not calculating that. Now, as I've said in previous videos, we had a 27 year old gas boiler. It was on its last legs and I was quoted 3,700 pounds to replace the entire system. This heat pump, including a couple of minor changes we had to make to our showers, cost 3,900 pounds after the bus grant. So a 200 pound difference. So it would have cost me 3,700 for the gas system or 3,900 for the heat pump. The difference between the two is I can't generate my own gas. Well, not the right type of gas to, uh, to run a gas boiler but I can generate 100% of the energy that this system uses for a vast majority of the year. So how long is this gonna to take to pay for itself? I think somewhere in the region of about 36 to 39 months. But again, not counting. Now, there's bound to be some accountants out there who tell me that I'm not depreciating my assets, um, I'm, I'm not uh, account accounting for capital costs, what if you just put the money in the bank? Well, actually, I did a video on what happens if you put the money in the bank just a few days ago. Um, I'll put a link to that up on the screen there, or you can find it down in the description. No, I'm not accounting for depreciation of assets in, my, in any of my calculations. I'm not an accountant, and I don't want to do it is the real answer. I could easily go and Google how to do it, but I don't really think it's necessary because Nobody does it for a gas boiler. So why do I need to do it for my heat pump just because it's a different type of heating technology? What about servicing spares, getting somebody out to, to look at it if it goes wrong? As I said, we have a seven year warranty on this. For the first five years of that, we have a 24 hour SLA with Octopus that if anything goes wrong, they'll have somebody out to us within 24 hours. Any spares, um, anything that goes wrong with it, they will take care of it for those first five years. After that, our seven year warranty is a little more limited um, and there's no SLA on getting somebody out from Daikin to, to do the work. For the solar system, as I say, we've only ever had to replace one inverter. Um, I'm expecting to replace the inverters approximately every 10 to 12 years. Um, they may last a little bit longer, but that's what I'm kind of factoring into my calculations. And inverter prices are just going down and down. Um, even if I had to replace the 10 kilowatt inverter that we have in the garage there, I'd be looking at somewhere in the region of maybe three, three and a half thousand pounds. Now, for all of you that say a gas boiler is still going to be cheaper to, uh, to run in the long run, here is my gas bill from one year ago. You can see the, uh, how much I paid for gas. This is my gas bill from this month. There is no way that gas is going to be cheaper. In fact, gas is just going to get more and more and more expensive. And the cost of solar power to me is free. So as your bills continue to get larger and larger over the years, as your gas price goes up, the cost of the solar to me is going to remain exactly the same for most of the year. Absolutely free. OK, let me start to wrap this up by saying heat pumps are not for everybody. They're not designed for every single house. If you live in a small Victorian terrace, you probably don't have the space to be able to install one. If you live in a modern house that's been built around a combi boiler, you may not have space for a water tank. But for those that do have the space for it, it is a really, really good heating system. And if you have solar and batteries to go with it, it becomes an exceptionally low cost heating system to heat your entire house. But before you rush out and get a heat pump, there are things you should do first. And again, these are just my personal recommendations, but make sure your house is insulated. Add extra insulation in your loft if you can. Before you invest in a heat pump, invest in solar and batteries first. They're gonna give you a much better return straight off on your money. And as I say, in about six to eight years time, they will have paid for themselves. And then use that money from that to invest in a heat pump. Now, I fully get that this is not something that everybody can afford to do. If you're living in a rental property um, or you, you don't have the, the funds to be able to do this, I fully understand that. But some people can. 
Some people are looking at large energy bills and saying, what can I do about this? And are in a position that they could afford to invest in solar, batteries, and possibly a heat pump. I can tell you one thing. This is the best investment I've ever made in my entire life. The return on the investment is just enormous compared to any stocks and shares ISAs you've got, um, any high interest savings accounts. None of these will even come close to the return on the investment that you will get from having solar and batteries on your house. So why am I doing all of this? Um, really, there's three reasons. First is about energy independence. As I say, I'm getting close to retirement. I'm in conversations with my wife is exactly when that will be. But when I retire, I don't want my retirement income from my pensions to be at the mercy of the global energy markets. As prices go up, at what seems like every single quarter now, the energy prices are going up small amounts at a time. I don't want to be at the mercy of that. So by having solar and batteries and a heat pump based uh, heating system for my house, I'm in much more control over my outgoings. So the second reason for doing this is I hopefully want to leave this planet in a slightly better shape than when I joined it. And if I can do that by not polluting, not pumping out carbon monoxide from a gas boiler, then I think that's the right thing to do. And the third reason, I actually enjoy managing it. So all of the apps, the control systems, the, a bit of programming, it it's something that I find really enjoyable to do. And I know from talking to many of you uh, in the comments that a lot of you find this enjoyable as well. Think of it as a hobby. But the reality is this might all seem complicated, but it's not magic. It's just a bit of smart tech and a bit of sunshine landing on your roof and you can have lower energy bills as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you on a similar journey? Are you thinking about getting into solar and batteries or heat pumps? Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what your experience has been. Have you had a bumper march like we've had here in Cambridge? Um, seems like endless days of sunshine. It almost feels like it should be June. It's just a little chillier than it would be in June, but the blue skies, endless sunshine has been fantastic. Now, if you're interested to see how this is going to perform across the whole year, how the solar and batteries come together with the heat pump, then do hit that like and subscribe button down below. And I'll be back each month with an update on how the system's been performing and how much money we've been saving. It just remains for me to say thank you very much for clicking on this video. I hope you found this useful, or if not useful, at least a little bit interesting. And also a big thank you to the entire community for everybody who's joined me on this journey. Um, this channel has really taken off over the last sort of six months and I really do appreciate everyone's help and support um, in, in getting it off the ground. And hopefully I'll return with some really good, interesting videos in the near future. Take care, bye-bye.